I'd like to thank those responsible for my nomination and induction into the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame. Thank all of you for attending tonight. It is an honor and I am humbled. I've been hunting since spam was only known as a type of canned meat. <laughs> Over the years, as a direct result of my passion for the great outdoors, I've had the opportunity to meet some wonderful people, encounter some unique cultures, <laughs> and experience some breathtaking adventures and vistas. I have visited some parts of the world that some people would only see on a National Geographic documentary or the Discovery Channel. I believe it is passion that makes a baseball or softball player take extra batting practice, makes a runner run that extra mile, makes a basketball player take those extra three throws, or drive a bow hunter to climb the last steep mountain. If hunting adventures have taught me anything, it's that chance favors the prepared mind. Preparation, visualization, and a positive, never quit attitude have, are the attributes, excuse me, are attributes that have the ability to transform outcomes in all aspects of life. <laughs> to prepare for some Arctic adventures, I bought a used walk-in freezer. For several months to help me acclimate to extreme cold, I would strip down and enter the freezer preset to 44 degrees below zero with nothing but a towel, a flashlight, a wooden stool, and the book Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> Each week I tried to increase the average daily number of pages read compared to the preceding week. By the end of my acclimating, I was reading 17 pages per session before shivering my way out of the freezer. It probably also did wonders for my speed reading ability. <laughs> now I'll admit, this sounds strange to some. Heck, even my friends tease me about the freezer, but it may have saved my life. You see, while in the Arctic, my Inuit guides and I were caught in an, in an unexpected storm. With wind chill, the temperature plummeted to negative 103 degrees. The Inuits came to me and said they could try to pitch camp, but with 50 mile an hour winds, it would have been impossible. And triple digit wind chills are lethal within minutes. They went on to say that if I could handle the cold, there was a fishing shanty about 10 kilometers from where we were, and that would give us better, better shelter, a better chance for survival. I told them that I was cool, but not cold. Let's try for the shanty. I'll never forget the look that they gave to each other, and I know that the tone of the hunt changed in that moment. I was not just some client anymore. I was accepted by the locals. I was willing to push myself and do whatever it took to make sure that we maximized our odds for survival, and I earned their respect. The hunt was successful. Hey, we survived. That's a success. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of visualization. I always try to anticipate a desired outcome and then mentally picture it happening. By using this method, I have found it to be easy to go into autopilot when others might falter in the same high pressure situation, like when the hunter becomes the hunted. I have hundreds of hunting memories. Some are humorous, others provide lessons. On one hunt near the Norton Sound of Alaska, we put out two large crab pots. When we later checked the traps, they were full of Alaskan king crab. We took the crabs back to camp and cooked our catch. Halfway through a delicious dinner, we ran out of butter. I speak from experience when I tell you that if you're ever eating seafood and you run out of butter, try mayonnaise, okay? <laughs> you won't regret it. <laughs> Mountain goat and sheep hunting are frequently done at high altitudes and extremely steep, even life-threatening slopes. To prepare for these hunts, I hiked steep inclines all summer with a backpack loaded with dry bags of cement weighing as much as 135 pounds. If you ever decide to consider a similar training regimen, put your cement bags in a plastic garbage bag first. Initially, I did not, and one day I got caught in a rainstorm. <laughs> when I got home, my backpack weighed almost 180 pounds, and I never made that mistake again. Self-reflection is a constant companion of most bow hunters. We may sit for hours, if not days, waiting for a single opportunity. During that time, you can learn a lot about yourself and about nature. I frequently relive many adventures when I feel just because the call of a certain songbird triggers a vivid memory. There are about 13.7 million hunters in the United States. There's approximately 750,000 resident and non-resident hunters in New York State alone. While the archery grand slam, excuse me, while the archery super slam has only been completed by about 20, maybe 22 hunters, it is not why I chose to pick up a bow and go afield. Humans are omnivores. We have stereoscopic vision common to most predators, shorter digestive tracts, and canine teeth. We were meant to eat meat to some degree. 
I enjoy the challenge of providing my own meals without the need of a grocery store. One additional benefit is that much of our meat does not contain growth hormones, GMOs, or antibiotics. I've enjoyed learning about the animals of North America as much as I've enjoyed pursuing them. My wife Nancy, also a bow hunter, also enjoys trying the different types of meat as well as learning various ways of preparing them. Lastly, my father passed away when I was young. I am mostly self-taught as a hunter. I would have enjoyed more mentoring when I was young. As a result, I try to take young or first-time hunters out hunting as often as possible. For the conservation of our outdoors to be most effective, we need to continue to pay it forward. It is my hope that if you are a landowner, or if you become a landowner, and someone asks for permission to hunt on your property, you will understand the advantages of allowing them to do so. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you for your time, and thank you for my induction into the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame. I am honored.